feel like I'm forgetting at least one book on this list. Of all the books I've read this year, that did not get their own review. Animal Farm, maybe? I'm sure that's not the only one that I'm not going to talk about now that I'm forgetting, but yeah, here are all the books that did not get their own review this year. Hi folks, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat and today I need to talk about a couple of books because they did not get their own review, mostly because they are continuations of series, but I should mention them anyway. Starting off with the second book in the Dune House Cozy Mystery series, Boats and Bad Guys. This is where it really came through to me that the book is telling you a lot of things rather than showing you. Like it also tells you that Susie and Mary are great friends and blah blah blah. Okay, but you've actually seen some of that in the first book, so for that bit it's fine. But a lot of the other stuff is just telling as well. Like you meet this guy in the first book, and you're like, yeah, okay, it looks like he might be a love interest, but he is very much a side character in the first book. And then the second book comes around and Suddenly they've already met up a couple of times and he's declaring his interest in the relationship with Susie. And then the biggest drawback I think for me was in book one you got the impression that Susie is just happy by herself. She's not overly interested in romantic involvement and she's fine with it. Now in the second book, because she's a bit hesitant to actually get into a relationship with this guy even though she clearly likes him, it's like her backstory has been switched out and suddenly she's hesitant or overly cautious because she's been hurt or disappointed before. It's a really weird switch and I'm not sure I appreciated it. I like the idea of a protagonist who's just like, okay, romantic stuff is not for me and it's fine. Next up, because I pre-ordered this pretty much as soon as I finished the first book, The World Remake, the continuation of the city we built and I still love that the fight against Squiggle Bitch was just great and we get to spend a lot more time with Pitmini in this one which is something that I felt was a bit missing in the first book maybe because you meet her somewhat later and you don't really spend any time with her while well, you also don't spend any time really with Neek I guess and he joins for the second book so that's cool as well. I also read the first two books in the Hundred Thousand Kingdoms series by N.K. Jemison. Like I said, she's just on my list for I will just pick up anything they put out and I started doing that. I liked both books as well. There are a lot of angry gods and humans caught in a crossfire and it makes for a gripping tale. At first I was a bit sad that when you start the second book your POV character from the first one is no longer there because, I mean, with how the story ends in book one, it kind of makes sense, I suppose. But still, I was sad that she only showed up briefly in the second book. Then again, you know, the first book is a bit more about politics and gods. And then the second one is more about human relationships with gods or other people, I suppose. Yeah, I enjoyed both books as well, and I will pick up the next one soon. Now, there was also a genre soup book club choice that I started and ditched after two and a half chapters because it annoyed the crap out of me. And this was The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. It has a horrible way of describing women, I think. You would hope that a dude, after a couple of years of marriage, has a bit more and something more interesting to say about his wife when describing her to a stranger than dyes her hair brown is about this tall and has big boobs. Really, that, that's how you describe your wife, man. And then the even bigger issue in this is this dude talks to a lady at the airport and he just spills all of the beans. Like, oh, my wife is cheating on me, how horrible. And then you get a different POV character, which is the lady that he talks to at the airport, but from her past, where she lives with her parents and random artists that keep cycling through the house, and one of them is a pedophile that assaults her. And the way that was described was far too voyeuristic for my taste. It, it just grossed me out. Like, you see plenty of assault and stuff in literature and so on, but... 
There's a way to depict it without making you feel gross, or as gross as this did, at least. Because this felt a lot more like you were seeing it from his point of view, it was described from her point of view, but she has so little negative to say about the guy that is assaulting her, and now it, it just put me off the book. I made it through like half a chapter after this, and this guy tells her, oh, my wife is cheating on me, and uh, she starts talking about some people are the kind worth killing. And his wife apparently counts into this group, just like the pedophile that assaulted her. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yes, cheating is not nice and it sucks for the person or in general, but that is not on the same level as a child abuser. What the hell? Yeah, so after that I just ditched this book because no. On to better works. I also read The Glass Magician and The Master Magician, the second and third book in the Paper Magician series. And for some reason, all three books are on Kindle Unlimited, which I find odd. I feel like I'm used to maybe the first one being on KU, so you get somebody's interest and then they go on and buy the other books, which I would have totally done for this series. But for some reason, you can read all of them over Kindle Unlimited, which just seems a bit odd because she's also not like a small indie author and has quite a readership already, so I don't know. They are on there if you're interested. On to the content of those books though. So what I admired about Seoni in book one, like something bad happens, nobody else will take charge in time to save a certain person, so she runs off and does it herself, even though she's ill-equipped to do so. It was romantic and daring in the first book, and I liked her for it. Book two, somebody is threatening her family and she runs off to do her own thing again, despite having people there who would help her and who are possibly better equipped to do so. But she just runs off and does it herself. I see it with her motivation and how close she is to her family, but not great. If you could have just taken people along to, you know, be better equipped for this fight, but she runs off anyway. But then, in the third book, she's just miffed that people won't share information with her. She's still an apprentice at that point, and she's mad that the police won't give her sensitive information about a mass murderer so she can run off and pursue this person as well, which she does anyway. I mean, she is kind of equipped for the job because she has figured something out about magic that virtually nobody else knows. But she's still not experienced enough, and she's also a single person going after a very dangerous criminal, and it's just like, woman, can you just be a bit more mature about this, maybe? Even in book two, the fight does not really turn out as one would have hoped, because, well, she doesn't manage to save someone, and I think that's in part on Sioni as well. In the third book, she's also excessively rude and judgmental towards another character that we only meet in book three. Yes, he deserved being told off for what he did, but she goes entirely too far with it, and she says some really hurtful and unnecessary things. So, for some reason, she seems less mature in book three than she's appeared in book one. It's a bit strange. The stories overall are still enjoyable and very good, but towards the end I think I developed a dislike for Sioni, which is really sad. Oh, but one thing I did complain about in my review, the teacher-student relationship, which I kind of frowned upon. That does come up quite a bit in book two and three, because other people take note as well, and the couple themselves also aware, mm, this is not really the best look for us, and not the best idea at the moment. But, yeah. At least it's not shrugged off as, yeah, that's perfectly normal and fine, because clearly it isn't. Anyway, those are all of the books that didn't get their own review that I've read this year, or at least of the ones I remembered and took notes for. Let me know in the comments what your favorite series this year was. I think I would have to go with The City We Build and The World We Make. It's only two books, but I really liked it. Like and subscribe if you want to help this channel out, and I'll be back next week with another video. Bye, folks!